Ladies and gentlemen, dear Tamil brothers and sisters, how would you feel if your child living in Ontario, Canada, has to attend in the month of May of every year for a week to be taught that the Sinhalese people of Sri Lanka killed their Tamil relatives with the intent of eliminating the Tamil race. Letting your child to be indoctrinated by corrosion with such heinous, monstrous and fabricated lies, it is nothing towards it is nothing less than fostering hatred towards the Sinhalese people and deepening the bounds of dissension. It's, it's not a process of healing. It is the most vicious vitriol that can be fed to a developing mind. And the worst endeavor you as a parent could give to your son or daughter. Ramila Senanayaka from Maple tells that she sent Premier Doug Ford of Ontario statements from Sinhalese Canadian school children in Greater Toronto that they have been unfairly targeted with this false narrative of genocide. Dear Tamil brothers and sisters, Think of Sri Lanka, your country that provided and nurtured you like your mother. You were born to, grew up breathing the air of solace, living and raising a family, educating and earning a living. You ignore these roots where you grew up clouded due to your selfish and unscrupulous motives, spinning the harshest derogatory claim which has no truth, no credibility, denigrating and disparaging your mother Sri Lanka in the eyes of the world. You have been the impetus to the driving force to this animus that has created a host of complaints in the UNHRC, United Nations Human Rights Commission, Bill 104 in the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, and for the Resolution 413 that was submitted on May 18, 2021 to the US Congress and now been referred to the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, which calls for stringent set of actions against human rights violations by Sri Lanka and recommends the United States to explore, investigate, and prosecute pursuant to the recommendations of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. What pleasure do you have? What pleasure do you derive by this imposition to interfere with an internal dispute in a sovereign republic that you are partly to be blamed? If you are truly credible and conscientious with morals and ethics, I am referring to my Tamil brothers and sisters, you should have given the opportunity for a robust scrutiny to safeguard the sensitivity of your mother country. Not to throw her to the dumps and to be devoured as you have done. The population numbers and statistical records of Tamils in government services and other places of repute does not support your unscrupulous claims. 
Numbers do not lie. If an unbiased and impartial objective view of credible information was evidenced to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario and to the U.S. Congress, I am sure the outcome would have been different. Seventy-one MPPs in Ontario Assembly have said that they had no idea that there is another side to the story. You may still have relatives in Sri Lanka whom you visit. Let me ask you, do you have any fear of being murdered by the hands of your Sri Lankan brothers and sisters when you travel to Sri Lanka? You may be in Ontario, but I know your heart still beats with the pulse of Sri Lanka. For the love of Sri Lanka, won the winds that sweeps the aroma of the blossoms in your village a solace to you? Don't you miss the sounds of the wild and the ocean waves? Beating on the silvery sand, sandy shores. I know, I know you miss them all in Scarborough. If not, why seek dual citizenship of Sri Lanka and buy land from the funds earned in Canada in a country you detest so much? I know of incidences that were reported in newspapers of Tamil families, your own, who have been living under the threat of intimidation and extortion. No one can speak in Sinhalese. It's a taboo. Shopkeepers in Scarborough are forced to exhibit the tiger symbol of LTTE. I speak with my life's experience, not with emotions. Canada was home for me and for my family for eight years. And 50 years after, no place on this planet Earth could take my heart away from Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lanka's reputation as a humane and a hospitable country has been tarnished with the passing of the third reading of a private bill. Tamil Genocide Education Week Act, presented by a Tamil MPP in Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, on May 6th, at the Canadian Legislative Assembly of Ontario. It became the first jurisdiction in the world to recognize the alleged genocide against Tamils in Sri Lanka. The Tamil Canadians hailed its passage as a historic event. The bill establishes seven days each year on May 11th to 18th, during which Ontarians are encouraged to educate themselves and to maintain their awareness of the Tamil genocide. The bill was rushed through the committee without a public hearing and deceitfully appointing a Tamil member, Mr. Logan Kanapati, to chair the meeting. Honorable Elizabeth Dowdeswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, 
signed into law within a few hours of its passage. Let me elucidate, explain. Regarding the protocols of establishing genocide, as laid down by the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 260A, drafted on 9th December of 1948, Article 13 ratifies that it is up to the mandated judicial body to make a legal determination as to whether genocide did indeed occur and who was responsible and the implementation to be executed by a lawfully constituted court and the use of the term genocide should only be made following a careful and a detailed examination of the facts against relevant legislation. Now we have a framework of reference, a set of directives by the UN Charter to see whether this passage of Bill 104 in the Legislative Assembly of Ontario had a legal right and was conducted within the rules and etiquette of the United Nations Charter. Let us examine the bill. I'm not going to read the entire bill as it is too wordy, but shall discuss the five kernel complaints that exemplifies the case against the Sri Lankan as committing genocide. First, intent of destroying the Tamils as an ethnic, cultural or religious group. This claim has absolutely no validity. At no time in history, there has been any attempt to eradicate the Tamils. Not even during the war between King Dutugaminu and Elara. Second complaint. Genocide against the Tamils started in 1948. After the Sri Lankan gained its independence and were perpetrated through Sinhala Buddhist-centric govern, government policies and ethnic policies, programs, land grabs, and ethnic cleansing. Dear brothers and sisters, I could not find any evidence of a massacre, ethnic cleansing, or any atrocities that was leveled, committed to, or at any minority group in 1948, just after the independence. The third complaint, the loss of Tamil civilian lives during the genocide, which continued for decades in Sri Lanka, is much higher, unquote. Not a valid state. Numbers do not support such a hypothetical statement. Complaint number four, in addition, the Sri Lankan state has systematically disenfranchised the Tamil population of their right to vote and to maintain their language, religion and culture, unquote. There is no such evidence at all, to the contrary, even today, there are some cities in the northeastern provinces in Sri Lanka conducting business only in Tamil. Fifth complaint. 
It is important for many reasons to acknowledge publicly that the killings and all aspects of the genocide constitute a heinous act. Zero evidence, provided only as a suggestive statement. This is the essence of the bill that was rammed, rushed through the Ontario Legislative Committee by the ignorant Tamil MPP to present his argument as genocide. What a fiasco. To my Canadian friends, let me explain. The first reported riot in Sri Lanka was in 1956, confined to Galloyer where there was a total of 150 deaths. And there was no evidence of malicious intentions to eradicate the Tamil population. And in 1958, when SWRD Bandarnaika was the prime minister, communal riots flared up due to the new government passing the Sinhala only act. making the Sinhala the official language of the country, which did not prohibit the right in the use of other ethnic languages. Sunday Times of 16th October 2005 reported, I quote, the outbreak of island-wide ethnic violence from May 24 to 27, in 1958 saw, for the first time, the deployment of military personnel under emergency proclamations throughout the entire island, where Colombo and the north and east of the country witnessed the worst violence leading to over 300 deaths a total tallied from both sides." Unquote. The Sinhala only act that aroused the Tamils to riot was not targeted to disenfranchise a specific race, in this case the Tamils, as erroneously claimed by the Bill 104. It was for sheer political reasons, but not for subjugation of any minority by the then recently formed post-colonial government. It was during this time, in 1958, that despondent Tamils who have been fighting from time and memorial as history will reveal, as history will show, to secure a country or a state to call their own, was infused by S.P. Aditanar, who founded the V. Tamils Party, waiting, wanting to create a homogeneous Greater Tamil Nadu. Yes, it was in 1958 incorporating the Tamil-speaking areas of India and Sri Lanka. Which led to the argument by Tamil leaders that at minimal, that Tamils must have self-determination or at maximum cessation from India and from Sri Lanka. The birth of the concept of a separate Tamil homeland, also referred to as Ilam. A 
reference to this statement is dynamics of Tamil Nadu, politics in Sri Lanka, ethnicity, chapter 4. Also in nationalism, as provided in Wikipedia, and also in religious nationalism, a reference handbook by Atelia Omar Jason, A. Springs, published in 2013. It says, Tamil religious nationalism expresses itself in the form of a linguistic purism. Pure Tamil nationalism and irradiance Tamil Ilam, social equality, self-respect movement, and Tamil Renaissance. The V Tamil Party organized a statewide protest demanding the establishment of a sovereign Tamil nation. During the protest, maps of India with Tamil Nadu left out were burnt. The morphed transform movement of the Dravidian nationalism gained momentum within the Tamil speakers by a series of small movements and organizations that contended that the South Indians composed a cultural entity that was different from the Indo-Aryans of North India as a pure race. And by the late 1960, the political parties who were espousing Dravidian ideologies gained power within the state of Tamil Nadu. This is how the poison seeds were strewn in germinating the differences that exasperated racial tensions not only among the Sinhalese, but also with the rest of India. The wedge was driven and the first blood was drawn by the Tamils. It took only 10 years for the Tamils of the Dravidian nationalist movement to gain power in Tamil Nadu. which began as an ideology in 1950. We Tamil's party lost the election in 1962 and merged with the DMK. Dravida Munetra Kasagam party in 1967. The outbreak of the Sri Lankan Civil War led the Tamil nationalism in Tamil Nadu to take a new shape. Many groups mushroomed within India and in Sri Lanka, of whom were with one objective, to form a separate Ilam state or a country for the Tamils. TNLA, Tamil Nadu Liberation Army, TNRL, Tamil National Retrieval Troops, TNRT, a Tamil Nationalist Organization, and the LTTE, Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ilam, are a few. Dear friends, If you study the preamble of this Bill 104, it is not a difficult, it is not difficult to see that the complaint of the genocide against Sri Lankan does not hold water. Not credible. An objective estimate of any physical or monetary value should be within 10 to 15 percent and at the most 
UN numbers of the civilians killed, 40 to 75 thousands, has a variant of 88 percent. And the anonymous numbers in the bill, 146,679 civilians, have an abhorrently ridiculous variant of 264 percent, an estimate which has not rounded to the closest 50 or 100. That depicts as an exact count in the figure ending with 679. Never heard or seen such variants in an estimate. Larger the variant, greater the uncertainty and the veracity, proving the invalidity of this claim which shows a high uncertainty and margin of error and lack of investigation. This fact alone should have been sufficient to the members of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario to have voted to make the bill null and void or open for debate, as there was no accountability to the veracity of the bill. And for not having been subject to the serious scrutiny and study that is required. I do not condone any loss of life. LTT was proscribed by majority of countries, including Canada, USA, and UK, as the most ruthless terrorist organization which forcibly recruited child soldiers, pioneered suicide bombing, and assassinated, assassinating heads of state of India and Sri Lanka. And already there are recordings of Tamil children presenting oral essays in the classroom regarding the alleged genocide. However, the federal government and the city of Toronto has re refrained from calling the defeat of the LTT as genocide. Mr. Chandra Arya, a member of the House of Commons, federal government of the federal government parliament addressing said, I was uh, pleased to host the first very successful Sinhalese Heritage Day of, on Parliament Hill on April the 27th, 2019, with about 500 Sinhalese Canadians, acknowledging the good relations Sinhalese have with the Canadians. The Tamils are vigilant and works in harmony, taking advantage by influencing, influencing notable politicians and keeping the pressure with organizations such as the Australian Tamil Congress, British uh, Tamils Forum, Irish, uh, Irish Tamil Forum, Solidarity Group for Peace and Justice, and the U.S. Tamil Action Group, and more. On August 30th of 2020, and on March of 2021, letters were sent by the Association for Relatives of enforced dis disappearances in the north and east provinces of Sri Lanka to Honorable Mrs. Michelle Bachelet Jeria, the High Commissioner of Human Rights Commission in Geneva, urging United Nations Human Rights Council to refer Sri Lanka to the International Criminal Court claiming crimes against humanity committed against Tamil people by Sri Lanka. It points out giving time will not only entrench impunity from punishment, it will also embolden the Sri Lankan government to intensify its abuses against Tamil people. With its huge military presence in Tamil areas and its draconian laws, 
Who wrote this? Says Kanagar Ranjin, the president of the association. You have to understand. The disappearances claimed our duty forcibly recruiting children and youth as child soldiers by the LTTE and by fabricated numbers that has no accountability. Military bases are required to protect any attack from enemy forces. And you know that. Therefore, US, like countries like USA, UK, Russia, France, India, Turkey, Germany, Italy, and even Japan and China have their presence known in 130-odd countries, 131 countries, foreign countries. Fortunately, not in Sri Lanka. The only protection of Sri Lanka has in case of any, any attack, enemy attack is our heroic military, Air Force, Naval, and Police Forces. Who saved the country from a 30-year-old war? falling into the hands of terrorists. It is this defeat that the Tamils cannot swallow, crying foul and complaining Sri Lanka has committed genocide. I would like to ask these huge and cry critics and journalists who are clamoring regarding the presence of military personnel in the northern region of country, patrolling a very vulnerable, defenseless maritime corridor from any possible terrorist activities that could flare up, that might escalate any time without the presence of the armed forces. Where were you grouches at the time when boats carrying weapons, bombs and illegal drugs were brought via maritime routes into the country to weaponize the terrorists? However, not all Tamils are in favor of the diaspora's agenda. Instagram removed hashtag Ilam recently, recently. And more and more Tamils in Canada, UK and USA are coming out of the closet. Speaking against the LTTE and the diaspora. Cracks are seen to be forming within the seams of the various groups of Tamils jockeying to take prominence and leadership. The Tamil people are beginning to realize that there is no valid claim of atrocity, atrocity crimes that was perpetrated by the Sinhalese. Disappearance numbers are hypothetical, whereas the numbers killed by suicide bombing have been accounted for independent sources. There are many Tamils who are not going along with the LTT or the diaspora's agenda. People are slowly beginning to get away from LTT and want to be moderate and be peaceful Sri Lankans. Cracks are tearing apart the Tamil community. Speaking with Arun Siddhartan, the president of Jaffna Civil Society, tells that there is no Tamilian in the north who has not suffered from under the LTT. And even today, discrimination is prevalent because they belong to the low caste. And he also says initially, the fight, Prabhakaran was not with the Sinhalese, but with the Vellala high caste Tamils. The low caste Tamils were not allowed to enter Kovils. Hindu places of worship from the front entrance wearing a shirt. It is still enforced to this day in some Hindu temples. Realizing that there is no overwhelming support, 
the spotlight should be now to be brightened so that, so that the cracks can be seen, revealed and widened. The UN Human Rights Commission should talk to Mr. Arun Siddharthan and the Tamils who have a different perspective, a story to tell of the love between the Sinhalese and the Tamils. I have been invited to participate in the Sri Lankan American Action Coalition Group in order to resist, to resist deceit, popularize the facts within the major ethnic groups about the, about the genocide. That will be taken up by the U.S. Congress with the Resolution 413, presented to the Secretary of State. I encourage all Sri Lankans to participate in this effort. Those interested and loved Sri Lanka should participate with the group who are doing some excellent work. Finally, I must say in conclusion, I'm not a politician. I'm a Sri Lankan Canadian citizen who for the first time stood up to talk to defend my country, I owe so much. Thank you very much.